Cleveland's first millennial mayor, Justin Bibb, campaigned on change. Now, with one full year in office under his belt, we sat down earlier this week for a wide-ranging discussion about how Speaker McCarthy's debt ceiling plan would devastate his city, his big plans to attract jobs to Cleveland, and his effort to stem violence in year two. Mayor Justin Bibb, welcome to The Sunday Show. Great to be with you, Jonathan. So Speaker McCarthy released his combination debt ceiling uh, budget plan earlier this week. And I'm wondering, there's so many things that he wants to do. He wants to claw back COVID relief funding, cancel out the president's student loan relief program, um, takes a hatchet to all sorts of um, green credits and things that the president had proposed. How do you know how much the speaker's plan will impact Cleveland yet? Uh, Speaker McCarthy's budget would have a devastating impact on Cleveland and the entire state of Ohio. We have a president in President Biden that has created the largest federal investment ever to address the green economy, to create good green jobs in our state. And getting rid of those tax incentives is a completely wrong thing to do for not just Cleveland, but for the entire country. And one of the issues here is that, you know, because he's combining the budget yeah. and raising the debt ceiling, that he's risking the possibility of default. As a mayor, how concerned are you that that could actually happen? Really concerned. Um, as a mayor, I don't have the luxury of not passing a budget that represents our core values. And this budget does not represent the core values of our country. It doesn't align to the core values that we see in Cleveland. The other thing that's really striking about this budget is the issue around food stamps. We have the second poorest big city right now in Cleveland, Ohio. They just cut the food stamp program from the COVID-19 uh, relief uh, time period. We had to create a mobile pop-up food bank in our city. There were hundreds of families trying to get food. So this would be, have a devastating impact on working class families all across my city. You know, you, you gave your State of the City address earlier this week. And one, yes. of the, one of the many things you crowed about, the first balanced budget yes. since 2020. First structurally balanced budget in over three years. We closed a $61 million deficit in just one year. So, it, it, also in your State of the City address, you said Cleveland is open for business, mm -hmm. but the city has lost 25 percent of its jobs and has seen an exodus where 22 percent of the population has left the city. Yeah. What are you doing to bring jobs and people back to Cleveland? Well, one of the things that we can't forget is that Cleveland was the heart of the Industrial Revolution. Uh, the world's first billionaire, John D. Rockefeller, started right here in Cleveland, Ohio. And with this president's new industrial policy, we are saying that Cleveland and the state of Ohio is ready to build things once again. The CHIPS bill is going to create a brand new semiconductor factory in our state with Intel. But those supply chain companies who are going to support Intel, we want to attract and retain those companies in our city. So our city currently has over a thousand acres of vacant land that we can create good greenfield sites to attract those supply chain companies, not just in the semiconductor industry, but in healthcare, in plastics, coatings, advanced manufacturing. This is how you create good jobs right in neighborhoods to truly create long-term wealth in an American city like Cleveland, Ohio. You know, crime and public safety um, were, among the, I think, the first topic yeah. you addressed in your State of the City address. But there were there were more than 15 shootings in in Cleveland this pa this past mm -hmm. weekend. Um, you you did point out that there was um, zero. Uh, police involved shootings or zero deadly force yeah. um, by the police force in 2022. What are you doing to stem gun violence in your city and what can Washington do? What yeah. do you want Washington yeah. to do? Well, my message for Washington is very clear. Uh, we need to pass an assault weapons ban in Congress. We need to pass background checks in Congress. We need to pass red flag glass laws in Congress. That's what we need to do to make sure we can keep our city safe. And as a mayor, we are doing everything we can in Cleveland to keep our community safe. We're using $10 million of American Rescue Plan funds to create a neighborhood safety endowment fund to invest in proven strategies that we know can reduce crime in our city. 
We're also paying our officers more. We negotiated the largest pay increase in modern history in our city to boost officer pay, to attract and retain officers in our city. But we have a national problem with the proliferation of guns in our country. And we have Republican state legislatures, like in Ohio, passing laws like permitless carry that create more guns on our streets. This is absolutely the wrong kind of policy solution, not just for Ohio, but all, all across the country. Let me get you on, on one more thing. Um, the shooting of Ralph Yar Yarl yeah. in Kansas City took me back to the killing of Trayvon Martin, I believe that was 2012, yeah. in Florida. But more importantly, the 2014 killing of Tamir Rice in Cleveland. I'm just wondering, real quickly, how do we get people to see black children as children instead of automatically viewing them as threats? We have to view them as part of humanity. We have to really think about whether or not it was their child on the other side of that door, like we saw with Ralph. We have a country that has not valued black bodies. We have not valued black men and black women. And this is why the work we are doing in Cleveland to address police reform is so important to me. My dad was a police officer for over 30 years in my community. And I know firsthand what it's like to understand not only just the importance of just police accountability, but being a black man in my city concerned about my interaction with law enforcement. And so we have a long way to go, uh, but we as a country must do a better job of valuing black people and black bodies in this space when it comes to public safety.